So the session is about the trigonometric ratios of complementary angles. So what are complementary angles? The sum of the angles is 90 degrees, then we say the two angles are complementary. If the sum of the angles is 180 degrees, we say the two angles are supplementary angles. This is the session for today. Now that we have already discussed about supplementary and complementary angles, so let me just give a brief direction. If angle X plus angle Y is 90 degrees, then we say this X and Y are set to be the complementary angles. Now using with the definition of this complementary angles, let's see how the trigonometric ratios of complementary angles are considered and what outcome comes out of the discussion of trigonometric ratios of complementary angles. To start with the right angle triangle. <coughs> Let me consider a right angle triangle. Say so this is A, B and C. And let me say the length opposite to angle A is A and this is B and this is C opposite to this. So A, B, C are the lengths of the sides of the triangle, right angle triangle A, B, C. Let me take this to be theta, angle theta. Then if this is theta and this is 90 degrees, we know that sum of all the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Therefore, this being 90 and this being theta, obviously this would be 90 minus theta is what we get for the third angle. Now this is what makes the definition of complementary angles because when I sum up angle B plus angle C, I get supplementary complementary angles. That is, in the triangle ABC, I clearly see that when I sum up angle B plus angle C, I get 90 degrees and hence this property is nothing but the complementary angle property. And using this complementary angle property of a right angle triangle with angle B plus angle C equal to 90 degrees, we are going to connect the trigonometric ratios with the property of complementary angles. So let's see how it is possible. So I take two sets of trigonometric ratios for each of the angle theta and angle 90 minus theta. Therefore, if I take theta for angle theta, then we have sine theta equals opposite by hypotenuse, cos theta is adjacent by hypotenuse, and tan theta is opposite by adjacent of the respect to angle theta. So let's initially find for theta all the three possible trigonometric ratios. So in this case, let me start with sine theta, which I clearly understand that from this triangle sine theta is opposite by hypotenuse therefore my opposite side being b this would be b by hypotenuse which is a comes out to be b by a so my first trigonometric ratio for the angle theta is sine theta equals b over a similarly let's start with the next trigonometric ratio cos or cosine theta so here, the cos theta is adjacent by hypotenuse, which is nothing but for the angle theta, adjacent is C and hypotenuse is A. So I get this as C over A. Thirdly, to start with tan theta. Tan theta is opposite by adjacent. Therefore, my opposite to angle theta is B and adjacent is C. So I get this as B over C is what I get for this angle theta, that is angle B. Next, let me take the angle C, which is 90 minus theta, as obtained from sum of all three angles of a triangle. So using this angle, let's see what are the trigonometric ratios defined for that particular angle, 90 minus theta. So here, for 90 minus theta equals angle C and here this equals angle B, let's see what are the possible trigonometric ratios. 
sine of the angle here is 90 minus theta. So in place of theta, I get 90 minus theta after the sine. So I need to find sine of the angle 90 minus theta, that is angle C. In this case, it is opposite by hypotenuse, but here the opposite side is not the same as this because opposite to 90 minus theta is C and hypotenuse is A. For opposite of theta is B and opposite of 90 minus theta is C. So opposite side changes with the angle. This angle has its opposite side here. This angle has its opposite side here. Therefore, for 90 minus theta, my opposite side is C. Therefore, I get C over hypotenuse, which is A. Similarly, I have cos 90 minus theta, which is adjacent by hypotenuse. So adjacent to the angle 90 minus theta is B, and hypotenuse is, of course, not going to change. It is fixed, which is A. So this would be B over A. And finally, my tan 90 minus theta is opposite by adjacent. Therefore, my opposite being C and adjacent being B is C over B is what I get for two particular angles, theta and 90 minus theta. Now, as I compare these two trigonometric ratios for the angle theta and 90 minus theta, which are the complementary angles, we come with an interesting outcome that if sine theta is B over A is nothing but same as cos 90 minus theta, which is also B over A. This matches with this. That means this is equal to this. Similarly, C by A matches this, which makes me understand that cos theta is sine 90 minus theta because the right hand sides are same, being C over A. This being C over A and this being C over A. Thirdly, I have tan theta is B over C, tan 90 minus theta is C over B, which makes me understand that this is reverse of this. That is, each of them are reverses of each other. So that makes us understand that one gets converted into cot, tan to cot or cot to tan. So initially to start with, let's identify the first two trigonometric ratios with their comparison. So here I identify that sine theta is clearly cos 90 minus theta. That is, we have a formula. This equals this and this equals this. So let's start with sine. So I have sine 90 minus theta is C over A, which is equal to cos theta. So this is the formula which is extracted from the trigonometric ratios of a right angle triangle. And similarly, my cos 90 minus theta is sine theta, is what I get from the ratios. Further, tan 90 minus theta is C over B, which is nothing but 1 by B over C, because C over B I can write as 1 over B over C, so that this reduces to 1 by B over C, which is clearly tan theta, and therefore this one substituted here gives me 1 by tan theta is cot theta. Therefore, I have three derived formulae, sin 90 minus theta is cos theta, cos 90 minus theta is sin theta, and and 90 minus theta is cot theta are the three basic formulae which are identified for the trigonometric ratios connected with complementary angles deriving three basic formulae sin 90 minus theta equals cos theta cos 90 minus theta equals sin theta tan 90 minus theta equals cot theta is what we conclude now let's find the other three trigonometric ratios connected with complementary angles that is cosecant secant and cot now, initially to start with, the three basic formulae which we have identified are first with sine 90 minus theta, next with cos 90 minus theta, and next tan 90 minus theta are the three formulae which we have obtained for this being cos, and this being sine, and this being cot. 
Now these three will help us in obtaining the reverse trigonometric ratios. For this reduces to 1 by sine is equal to 1 by cos. I have taken the reciprocal of both of them because when x is equal to y, 1 by x equal to y. Since x equal to y implies 1 by x equals 1 by y. So using this property, I get this, which on further simplification gives cosecant 90 minus theta is 1 by cos, which is secant theta, is the formula which we obtain for the first connected with this. Similarly, this gives me secant 90 minus theta equals cosecant theta is what is derived for the second reverse trigonometric ratio. And finally, to start with this, tan reversed gives me cot on the right. Cot reversed gives me tan is what I get as the three other trigonometric ratios, cosecant, secant, and cot is what we get on the whole. So the trigonometric ratios of complementary angles connected with six basic formulae, sine, cos, tan, cosecant, secant, and cot, differing by 90 degrees. So let's see the applications of trigonometric ratios of complementary angles, which we have derived in the recent session connected with real life applications. Now one of the applications is where when, ha when I have the trigonometric ratios in the product, generally we try to use the formula sine 90 minus theta, cos 90 minus theta or tan 90 minus theta. These kind of problems are simplified more using the topic of trigonometric ratios of complementary angles. So let's see one of the example problem where I would like to simplify tan 48 degrees times tan 16 degrees times tan 42 degrees times tan 74 degrees. So in order to simplify this value, let's try to rearrange in the form where I don't disturb the first two products tan 48 times tan 16, but here tan 42 I tend to write as tan 90 minus 48 because 90 minus 48 is 42. So this 42 is written as 90 minus 48. Similarly, I take the last trigonometric ratio and write this 74 as 90 minus 16, which gives me 74 degrees. So exactly my 74 degrees being 90 minus 16 is substituted in place of this and this is transferred as 90 minus 48. So undisturbing the whole expression, let's see what exactly would be the outcome. So coming to the next, this is tan 48 as it is and this is tan 16 as it is. But next, tan 90 minus theta is cot theta is what we have as the formula which is recently defined to be cot theta is the formula which I am going to use out here. Therefore, substituting tan 90 minus 48 would be cot 48 using this formula. Therefore, I get this as cot 48 times. Similarly, tan 90 minus 16 using this formula would give me cot 16 degrees. So this is strictly because of the formula which I have here. Tan 90 minus theta is cot theta. Simplifying this further, I have this as tan 48 times tan 16 times. Now we know that you have a formula which says that cot theta is reciprocal of tan or tan is reciprocal of tan. I have cot theta is 1 by tan theta. Therefore, my cot 48, I can write as 1 by tan 48. Similarly, my cot 16 would be 1 by tan 16 using the formula. Is what I get from this formula. Now next, immediately I see that this two tan 48s get cancelled because one is in the numerator and one is in the denominator. Similarly, this and this gets cancelled and I get finally 1, which is said to be the required answer. So this is the required answer. That is, 
When I simplify this product, I get the answer as 1, strictly using the trigonometric ratio of complementary angles, one of the applications in the branch of mathematics. So trigonometric identities is the topic of the session. So what are trigonometric identities? Or basically, what are the identities in mathematics? Say for example, I take a plus b whole square. We clearly identify that a plus b whole square is a square plus 2ab plus b square. And this holds true for any a and b. Universally, you take any value of a and any value of b in mathematics. It is mathematically true that a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. This proves that it is an identity because it is universally true for any two values taken for a and b. So such expressions which are equated to be true for all values is set, are said to be identities. So trigonometric ratios are also connected with identities. There are some basic identities for which you take any angle and substitute in the equation you get equal. One of the identity which we are going to prove here. The trigonometric identity which we are going to prove out here. So let's see what is the first trigonometric identity which we are going to derive out of the trigonometric ratios. So initially to come with, I'll consider a right angle triangle ABC to start with identifying the first trigonometric identity. So let's take a right angle triangle A, B, and C, and this is theta. So in this, I have my opposite side is this, my adjacent side is this, and my hypotenuse is this. Therefore, by using the Pythagoras theorem, I clearly have, by Pythagoras theorem, hypotenuse squared as opposite square plus adjacent square. So here, what I do is I divide the whole equation by h square. Let's see what happens if I divide the whole equation with h square on both sides, the left hand side and the right hand side. So h square by h squared would be O squared plus A squared by h squared is what I get when I just divide both sides of the equation. Now immediately I can cancel this because they are equal in the numerator and the denominator. So let's see what happens when I take this. I take this to the left, I get this as O squared plus A squared by h squared equals 1. When I simplify this further, I can split this as O squared by h squared plus A squared by h squared equals 1. Splitting the denominator, it goes into each of the term as O squared by S h squared. Simplifying this further, I get this. As. So when I split the denominator, it goes into each of the term as O squared by h squared plus A squared by h squared equal to 1. And when I simplify this further, I get this continued as O squared by H squared, which I can write as O by H whole square, and A squared by H squared, which I can write as A by H whole square. Using the loss of indices, I get this equal to 1. A power M by B power M is A by B whole power M, the law of index, which I have applied out here. So in this case, my opposite by hypotenuse is sine theta because we have already discussed about the trigonometric ratios where opposite by hypotenuse is sine theta which is opposite side by hypotenuse. Whole square plus adjacent by hypotenuse is cos theta which we have already identified in the trigonometric ratios. Therefore cos theta is adjacent by hypotenuse. So in place of this I get cos theta whole square equals 1. Now, usually the powers of the sine are written before the angle. 
the notation and the rule of writing the power for a trigonometric ratio is we don't write sine theta whole square but we write sine square theta plus cos square theta equals 1 it comes after this where sine square theta is assumed as sine theta times sine theta cos square theta is assumed as cos theta times cos theta and then this is the trigonometric identity which is identified in case of the trigonometric ratio sine and cos so the first identity we have identified is sine square theta plus cos square theta is always equal to 1 when I square the sine I square the cos and add them I get 1 of course for the same angle theta is the first trigonometric identity so dividing the whole equation let's see what happens if I divide with a square let's see if there's a new trigonometric identity which I can discover out of dividing the whole equation by a square previously I divided with h square then now I attempt on dividing the whole equation by a square and then finally let's see in the next session of what happens when I divide the whole equation by o square so initially here to start with dividing the whole equation by a square then I get here o square plus a square by a square equals h square by a square is what I get when I split the term each of the terms through the denominator then this reduces to o square by a square plus a square by a square is h square by a square is what is obtained and this is further simplified so that this and this being same get cancelled and I get 1 that implies I get this as o square by a square plus 1 is h square by a square this gets reduced to 1 now this when rearranged through the law of index I get this to be o by a whole square raised to the power 2 on the whole plus 1 equals h by a whole raised to 2 now comes the question of the trigonometric ratios what is opposite by adjacent we have seen that opposite by adjacent is tan theta for the right angle triangle ABC with angle theta opposite by adjacent is tan theta therefore I get this as tan theta whole square plus 1 equals hypotenuse by adjacent is secant theta because adjacent by hypotenuse is cosine theta so reciprocal of cosine is h by a is identified to be secant theta using its respective formula as discussed in the previous sessions that implies when I rearrange this is reduced as 1 plus tan square theta equals secant square theta is one of the identity which is identified in trigonometric ratios the second identity identified here is that 1 plus tan square theta is always equal to the secant square theta for any angle theta the second identity of trigonometric ratios now dividing the whole equation by finally with o square let's see what is the trigonometric identity we derive out of dividing the whole equation by o square so in this case o square plus a square by o square equals h square by o square when the, both the sides of the equations are divided with o square so proceeding similarly by splitting each of the terms I get this as h square by o square thus these two being equal gets cancelled and I get 1 plus a square by o square equals h square by o square now proceeding similarly with this I get this to be 1 plus a by a square by o square I write as a by o whole square and then the right hand side I get h by o whole square and then that implies 1 plus a by o opposite by adjacent is tan theta 
So adjacent by opposite is clearly cot theta in its respective trigonometric ratios. Therefore, A by O is substituted for cot theta and H by O is co cosecant theta because the reverse of sine, this is reverse of sine which is cosecant. Therefore, hypotenuse by opposite is cosecant theta whole square is what we get. So this, on rearranging, I get 1 plus cot square theta is identically equal to cosecant square theta. Is the third trigonometric identity identified connecting the trigonometric ratios for the right angle triangle ABC. Is how we understand each of the trigonometric identities, the most important of them being the three identities which we have derived. Thank you.